Oh. Wrong number. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Hyperlink. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Say hello to the UK. Hello UK, welcome to Africa. Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the Unapologetic Negropian in today's video. As you might have noticed, I have made one or two videos about Blacksit recently. Yes, I've been putting a lot of pressure on her and on the actual organization itself. I've been pointing my fingers squarely at her and at her dodgy business practices. But there is one thing that we haven't actually thought about, and that is the genesis of her idea. Where did she actually get the idea to come to the Gambia and start selling land? In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Juliet's inspiration, who and what gave her the idea to come to the Gambia to start selling land to those people in the diaspora who were looking to repatriate back to the motherland. First, I'm going to ask you to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and please consider supporting the channel on our Patreon, link in the description. I'm also going to ask you to please follow the Oversight channel, the channel that is there to help you to invest on the African continent, both safely and securely, link both in the description. So in order for us to take a look at where Blacksit came from, we need to take a look at who she knew when she first got to the Gambia. When Blacksit first came to the Gambia, she was met by Luke McKenzie. I'm not sure if Luke McKenzie had known her from back in the UK, but what I do know is that he is the person that introduced her to the subject of today's video. Matthew Hyperlite. Matthew Hyperlite is a British Caribbean businessman. He is the person who owns the Gambian resort Hyperlink. He is a savvy, dressing, smooth-talking, well-groomed salesperson. This guy is very likable. When you see him from the outside, man, uh, this guy, you could just tell that the sun shines out of his orifices. Is somebody who is extremely likable and it is clear that he's used his well-positioned manner to go out and sell himself and to sell land and sell everything else. He is a person who came to the Gambia. He has been there since before all this started. He was there before YouTube started. This guy is the genesis, the, the, the source of inspiration for all the land sellers who are busy using Garveyanism and Pan-Africanism to sell land to the greater African diaspora. Matthew Hyperlink has been in the Gambia for well over 10 years and many people don't really know him and this isn't an accident we don't know him because he doesn't tend to use youtube and newer sources of social media in order to go after his customers matthew hyperlite uses facebook he is one of those facebook fiends he's always been on facebook he knows how to use it he knows how to navigate it he knows that the vast majority of his customer base the people that fit his criteria the right age retirement those people with money those people are on facebook and he knows this and he knows how to target them and when juliet first came to the gambia luke mckenzie introduced her to Matthew Hyperlite and Matthew Hyperlite showed her the ropes, showed her how to sell land and Juliet started working for him. Juliet started working for him because she wanted what he had. She wanted the Gambian resort. She wanted to have that name. She wanted to, the status. She wanted that money. She wanted to be famous. But first she had to do all the legwork and she had to do all the legwork for Matthew Hyperlite. Matthew Hyperlite is really intelligent so what did he do? Well, he used Blacksit. He stayed in the background and allowed her to build this Blacksit empire. People were still being siphoned through code and then being diverted over to Blacksit so she could sell that land to them. A few Hyperlite would take some of that money. This is the beginning of the Blacksit organization and where it started getting a foothold in the Gambian land selling industry, if there is such a thing. Now, why was Matthew smart? Because he knows that there were tons of problems associated with selling land to the African diaspora. He knows that it's difficult to get our Carlo papers. He knows that the process is long. He knows that there are people out there who will sell land two, three, four times over. So he thought, let's use Blacksit. Let's wrap it round her neck. And when things go wrong, we will set her to the wolves. Savvy thinking, right? Definitely thinking of a good businessman. But there is a dark 
cloud hanging over Matthew Hyperlite at this present moment. And this is something that I have to be very careful with because he is being accused of doing something so heinous, I'm not even sure that I can mention it on YouTube. So Matthew Hyperlite at this moment is not in the Gambia. Matthew Hyperlite is in the UK and he needs to stay in the UK. This is because Matthew Hyperlite is on bail. When he went back to the UK, he was arrested. He was arrested for S, abuse. Yes, that is S, abuse. You know what I'm talking about. But the person who he is accused of this S, abuse with, well, it is none other than his own sister, his deaf and dumb sister. Um, this is just crazy. I really didn't even want to mention that, but I had to say it. This is just an accusation. I would even like to say where there is smoke, there's fire, but I cannot say this because this is such a bad accusation. It is important that we keep a clear mind and look at this man as if he is not guilty for these crimes first. I know it's difficult. I know in the court of public opinion, we like to throw people under buses pretty much straight away, but we do need to be careful on this one. Now, the bad thing about this is, is that not a lot of people know that he's on bail. But even though he's in the UK and he's unable to leave the UK, he will still be working through Facebook. He will still be selling land. He will still be selling his shares in the Gambian Hyperlink Resort. He will still be trying to make money through Facebook. The only problem here is, is that he will be collecting this money. But if something happens, if he does get his bail revoked, if he goes to prison, if he gets found guilty, for whatever reason, hundreds of people could be out of their money simply because he is not there to deal with his business anymore. So he'll be taking your money and he'll be going to prison with it. Any person that goes to prison will tell you having that money is a nice bonus when you get out afterwards. It's nice to be able to have some cash when you get out afterwards and so you can start again, so you can restart your life. It's likely that he could lose his businesses, he could lose his ability to travel to the Gambia altogether. Things are not looking good for Matthew Hyperlite at this present moment. And so guys, I need to warn any of you guys, if you are planning to go to the Gambia to do business with Matthew Hyperlite, I would strongly urge you to reconsider doing that. At this present moment, his position is tenuous and you don't know what is going to be happening in the future. Regardless of what happens to him, whether he's found guilty or whether the charges are dropped, this is a person who taught Blacksit. So, you know how bad Blacksit is? Well, this is where it all came from. So guys, have any of you done any business with Matthew Hyperlite? Have any of you ever stayed at the Hyperlink Gambian Resort? Do any of you defend Matthew Hyperlite? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It'd be really good to hear your opinion on this. So guys, that's all I've got time for for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons and I'll see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice to our bit.